In the Kursk Oblast, Ukrainian troops repulsed a mechanized attack by the invaders using the captured Russian defense line. Units of the 129th Territorial Defense Brigade took up fortified positions built by the invaders on the Russian-Ukrainian border to rebuff the enemy offensive. A Russian mechanized assault group with a turtle tank equipped with a mine trawl was defeated on the outskirts of the city as a result of artillery strikes, mine explosions and drone strikes, according to Militani media outlet. The location of destroyed Russian vehicles was geolocated 1.5 kilometers east of the village of Plekovo, the Kursk Oblast, near a former Russian stronghold. Units of the 128th Territorial Defense Brigade have apparently deployed their main forces to these positions. Judging by the images, they were well dug in and intended for a circular defense. The enemy column marched towards them for almost three kilometers under artillery fire, but ran into an anti-tank ditch and a concrete block barrier where it was finished off. At the same time, the advance of the rushed assault vehicles was hampered by nearby barbed wire barriers one kilometer away from main Ukrainian positions. Earlier, Militani told about large-scale fortification complexes built by the Russian military in the border area of the Kursk Oblast. In particular, the company stronghold of the 488th Motorized Rifle Regiment of the Russian Armed Forces consisted of dugouts and facilities connected by an extensive network of underground communications. Fortified from all sides, the stronghold was completely hidden underground. It was electrified and connected to other underground living quarters, a dining room, weapons storage facilities, as well as a bathhouse and toilet. Significant stocks of food, weapons and ammunition were found at the facility which the military could have used in a circular defense. Soldiers of the Security Service of Ukraine also captured 102 soldiers of the 488th Guards Motor Rifle Regiment, including conscripts. Since the beginning of the Ukrainian Armed Forces operation in the Kursk region, Russians have caused significant damage to the civilian infrastructure of Sudza. This was reported by Vadim Misnik, a spokesman for the Siversk OTG on the air of the Suspilny Novini Marathon. When our defense forces were taking control of the city, three to four buildings were almost damaged and Russian soldiers were knocked out of them, he said. However, now the Russian military has destroyed the ice palace, kindergartens, schools and banking institutions with shelling. They are destroying a lot of their own infrastructure, the spokesman stressed. He said that the Russian army continues to use multiple rocket launchers more intensively in the area of the Kursk region controlled by the defense forces than in Ukraine's Chernihiv, Sumy and part of Kharkiv regions. Alexander Kovalenko, Ukrainian military and political analyst with the Information Resistance Group, says that in the Kursk region, Ukraine's forces have expanded control, matching Russian advances. As for the situation in the Kursk region, we do not know what it is in reality because the information we have is mostly from Russian propaganda, and no one knows what is happening on the part of the Ukrainian defense forces. The impression is that the Russians are making some advances in the direction of Opanasovka, Snagost, Lubimovka, which is a maneuverable defense. As for what is happening in the direction of the Glushkovsky district or in the north of the Korenevsky district on the road to Lgov, no one is talking about it. However, I think we will find out this week because the Ukrainian defense forces have the same expansion of the zone of control as the Russian occupiers have some advances within their phenomenal counteroffensive, noted the military and political observer of the information resistance group on Espresso TV. According to him, if this Russian counter-offensive had had the appropriate efficiency, then control over the overall situation in the Kursk region would not have been transferred from Dumin, Secretary of the State Council of the Russian Federation, to Botnikov, Director of the FSB of the Russian Federation. Even Dumin failed to live up to the expectations that the Kremlin war criminal had for him. We are now on September the 30th. Another week and it will be the second month of the Kursk operation. On August the 6th, the Russian group in the Kursk region had a strength of just under 10,000 personnel. Now the Kursk group has more than 41,000 personnel. During this period, the Russians suffered losses of somewhere over 10,000 and this is not according to our data but from Russian publics. That is, over these two months, 
50,000 personnel of the Russian forces were involved in the Kursk region alone, Alexander Kovalenko summarized. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said earlier that his forces controlled 100 settlements in the Kursk region over an area of more than 1,300 square kilometers. Russian sources disputed this figure and Russia says it has since taken back some villages in the counter-attack. The Ukrainian armed forces continue to fight not only on the territory of Ukraine but also in Russia. Now, Ukrainian forces in Veseloy settlement. At the same time, Russian war correspondents claim that fighting in this settlement is being carried out by occupiers from the 56th Airborne Regiment. At the same time, the Ukrainian armed forces continue to fight along the entire salient in the Kursk region. Recently, fighting took place in the area of Lyubimovka, Pogrebki, Kremlyanoi, Kamyshevka, and Cherkaski, Porichnoi. Russian Z channels write about the presence of the Ukrainian armed forces in the Olgovka area. Russian Z bloggers write that Putin's army counter-attacked Ukrainian forces but did not achieve significant successes. Ukrainian war correspondent Konstantin Mashovets reported that the forces of the 7th and 106th Airborne Divisions, the 810th and the 155th Marine Brigades of the Russian Armed Forces are trying to strengthen their positions, preparing for new attacks from the Ukrainian Armed Forces. According to him, the Russian Defense Ministry has currently concentrated about 41,000 servicemen in the Kursk region. In the near future, up to 6,000 more occupiers will be transferred. In this case, the underground movement Atesh reported a sabotage on a key railroad line in the Kursk region. The explosion of a relay cabinet will complicate the supply of the Russian army to the front. Our agents blew up a relay cabinet on one of the key railroad lines through which the Russian armed forces deliver equipment and ammunition to the Kursk section of the front line, Atesh reported. It is noted that this railroad line is of strategic importance as it provides a constant supply of the Russian army to the front line. Disruption of its operation weakens logistic support and complicates the transportation of important military equipment. The Russian forces planned to launch a major offensive in the Kursk region. However, it turned out to be a failure, according to BUILD. As reported by the agency, Vladimir Putin announced in mid-August that by October the 1st, the Russian army must fully regain control of the entire Kursk region. However, the Russian counter-offensive stalled. BUILD noted that it was only on September the 17th that Russian tanks advanced south of Korenevo. Shortly after, the Kremlin extended the deadline stating that the Russian army has time until mid-October to regain control over the territory held by the Ukrainian armed forces. Even this goal seems unlikely at the moment, 